Alyssa. Recently, I had the opportunity to go skydiving, or more like was coerced into going skydiving, but did live to tell the tale. We went up in this tiny little plane up to 8,000 feet, and the way it works is they get you all the way up there, and then they clip you. You're wearing like a rock climbing type harness, and so is a worker, and the worker has a backpack with a parachute. So they clip your harness to the worker's harness, and then they open the door of the plane while it's moving at about 70 or so miles per hour, and then just you fall out. So that happened to me, and they opened the door of the plane, and out I fell. And for about 50 seconds, almost a minute, we were just in complete free fall. No parachute, nothing. The wind was rushing so fast that I could feel the pressure difference in my legs with, um, felt like my legs were trying to burst. And then the worker said, I'm going to pull the parachute cord. So he did. And then we slowed down significantly and floated for about another four minutes until we landed in a field. So the benefits of doing the tandem skydive which is jumping with the instructor, or that you're a lot less likely to die. So that is the way that I recommend for most people to do it if you haven't done it before. But while I was floating down, for since for about four minutes, I had nothing to do but really look around and think about how nauseated I was, then I decided that this would make a cool dynamics problem to calculate. So I started asking the worker all the different statistics about the situation. So... What do we need to know about this situation in order to calculate it? Well, there are a couple different things that we could calculate. Um, drag coefficient while we're falling, terminal velocity while we're falling, time that it takes to fall. So in order to know how to actually construct the problem or what things I could calculate, I needed to know what things are given. So I asked the worker with me first, how much does he weigh? So we need to know mass of worker, mass of me. So my mass is 60 kilograms. And the worker said that, well, he didn't know kilograms, but he was about 200 pounds, which is 90 kilograms. He also told me that before they pull the parachute, our terminal velocity is 120 miles per hour. If we change this into metric units, this is 200 kilometers per hour, or 55 meters per second. And then he told me that the size of the parachute was about 10 feet by 40 feet. So the parachutes come in different sizes and shapes, but ours was basically a rectangle. So this is three meters times 10 meters. So you can actually look up drag coefficient for parachutes. This one was CD equals 1.75 and drag coefficient has no units. And then air density is another thing that you can look up. So density of air is 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. So these are all the different things that we can know. Well, we know the terminal velocity for no parachute, but we don't know the drag coefficient for that. So that's something we can calculate. And then once the parachute is pulled, we know the drag coefficient, but it would be nice to know how fast are we going when we hit the ground. So these are two scenarios we can calculate. So say, given mass of the people, say, we'll say M2 because it's two people. So M2 equals 60 plus 90 equals 150 kilograms. Okay, so given masses of the people, um, the density of air, the terminal velocity, or no parachute, call that V final. The 
drag coefficient for the parachute, call that CDP, and the area of the parachute, call that AP, which is the three meter by 10 meter, we need to find First, we'll find CD for free fall. And second, we'll find terminal velocity, say VP, of hitting the ground with the parachute. Well, first, let's draw our free body diagram. So, we have the person here, and you lay kind of on your stomach and you put your legs up, and then the person on the underneath, which would have been me, has to scrunch their arms up really close to their chest, and then the guy with the parachute might put his arms out to sort of like steer a little bit, um, or he could, or he can just put them on uh, his chest as well. So. We need to know the area of the person here in free fall, but we also need to do the free body diagram. So we know that the person's weight is pushing down. So weight is mg. And then we know that the drag force from the air is pushing up. Call that fd. And the formula for fd equals one half CD rho B squared A. But if we sum the forces, um, in order for the person not to be accelerating, which means terminal velocity, then the drag force has to equal the force from the weight. Before that, like when you just fall out of the plane, then you are going to be accelerating downwards because since the drag force is proportional to velocity or you're not going very fast yet, the drag force is small. And then eventually you get to be going so fast that the drag force is equal to the weight and then you're at your terminal velocity. So we'll say that some of the forces in the y direction equals zero and the drag force equals mg. So drag force going up, weight going down. So this is going to be one half density of air, CD, B final squared times A. Well, we don't actually know the area of the person, but we can estimate. Let's say that uh, with your knees bent, the person is 1.5 meters long and say diameter of 0 0.6 meters. So wider than one foot, probably not, maybe two feet wide with your arms by your sides. So now we have the area and we can rearrange this equation and solve for drag coefficient. So if we rearrange this equation, and this is again for Part one, um, then we have 2mg over rho vf squared a equals cd. So if we put numbers in here, we'll have 2 um, times m, which we'll say is m2 because we have two people there. That is the 150 kilograms. And then G is just a 9.81 meters per second. Rho, we can look that up. Now, density of air actually is not a constant because um, down at ground level, the air is more dense than it is high up in the sky. But um, it's we'll just use an average value, the 1.225. And then the final squared, so our terminal velocity of 120 miles per hour is 55 meters per second. So we'll square that. 
and then multiply it by the area, which is the 1.5 times 0.6 meters. So we multiply all this together and we get CD equals 0 0.882. Drag coefficient has no units. So 0 0.882 for a free fall drag coefficient. And just to do a reality check on this, the 0 0.882 is much smaller than the 1.75, which is the drag coefficient that includes a parachute. So that should make sense. So now moving on to the second part of the problem, let's see how fast we're going to be going when we hit the ground after pulling the parachute. So part two, we pull the parachute, it suddenly opens up to this three meter by 10 meter area. And that will jerk us to completely a, a slowdown, as slow as we can possibly get. And then we'll be floating down at that same speed until we hit the ground. So we can use our same formula, knowing still that the weight has to equal the drag force. So we, our free body diagram actually is really similar, even though we're pointed in a different direction, still the drag force that is going up into the parachute. So we have parachute um, drag force here, and then person. Then we still have the weight going down. So we still have that the drag force equals the weight. So then our what we need to solve for now is the terminal velocity. So we'll say that M2G equals one half rho, which is still the same, density of air times CD, but this is CD for the parachute, times V of the parachute squared times area of parachute. So what we're looking at is the area that the wind sees, basically. So what is the, the footprint or the shadow of the system? So we don't have to add the area of the person to the area of the parachute because the parachute is so big that it encompasses the person. So um, the shadow on the ground that you would see is basically equal to the area of the parachute. So we'll go with that. So now we need to rearrange this equation, solve out for Vp. So we have 2 m2g over rho air cdp ap square root all of that equals vp. So we should get a vp that's much smaller than that 120 miles per hour. Otherwise, we would go splat like cracking an egg. So Putting numbers in here, we'll have two times the 150 kilograms mass times 9.81 divide by 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed times the 1.75 CD times the three meter times 10 meter parachute area. So we do all that, we square root Put that into a calculator and we get VP equals 21.4 meters per second. Um, to put that into perspective, it is 47.9 miles per hour. So it is no wonder that the most common injury in skydiving is broken ankles. There is a special landing technique, which you can see in the video, is you put your legs up straight in front of you and just sort of like skid across the ground. Um, this can have a good effect because it sort of spreads out the landing force across your whole legs, but also 
Um, one thing to note is that this terminal velocity, this is the descent velocity. So it can also be affected by wind. If you have a crosswind or if you have a wind that is uh, blowing sort of up or sort of down, that will all affect those. But um, the nice thing is that at least you do have that parachute slowing you way down from the 120 miles per hour to under 50 miles per hour. So that is how to calculate skydiving dynamics. Here's Alyssa. Congratulations.